Pretty much every workstation nowadays has the ability to time shift audio files without changing the pitch. And not just DAWs, plugins incorporated too. Virtual instrument samplers make use of the feature to tweak and sometimes mangle audio. As I said before, the technology is so common that we sometimes forget that there are limits to what it can do. But most of the time it works just fine for straightforward tasks like matching audio recorded at one tempo to a different tempo, correcting the timing of a performance, or creatively changing the rhythm of an audio recording. Time shifting goes by different names. Every DAW has its own moniker for this feature. In Pro Tools, it's called Elastic Audio. You're warping the audio timing. In Logic, it's Flex Mode. You're flexing the audio. Other DAWs have their own terminology, but it's the same technology under the hood. And the way it's used is pretty similar from one DAW to another as well. I'm going to start off looking at the aspects of time shifting that are common to every application. Pro Tools was not the first, but it was one of the earliest DAWs to offer time shifting as a feature built into the program. Their elastic audio feature is a good version to introduce the technology. The implementation, as usual with Pro Tools, is straightforward. The sound quality of the time shifting algorithms is very good, and the user interface is easy to get a handle on. Just like time shifting in simpler recording software, Elastic Audio can be applied automatically to audio loops and imported audio, so non-technical users don't have to think about its use. We don't really need a course on how to switch on a button. So I'm going to focus on the manual application of it, which requires more knowledge of the underlying technology, and creative applications, which involve more advanced editing techniques than you'd find in entry-level apps like GarageBand. So to introduce the concepts and terminology, let's start off with a few basic applications for time shifting and see how the technology can be put to use. The song you're looking at is already in sync with the session tempo. So I'm first going to try a very basic time shift. The audio is recorded at 124 BPM. Let's say you need to slightly speed up or slow down the entire tune before you continue mixing or arranging. This could be for musical reasons, maybe the band decided the song works better at a different tempo. Or you might have to fit a 33 second snippet of music exactly into a 30 second commercial without cutting anything out. Now you could bounce down to a stereo master and time shift that single audio file. But for a busy arrangement, you most likely get better sound quality time shifting each track individually by utilizing the best version of the DAW's time shifting algorithms for the different instruments and voices. And that brings us to the first technical consideration. Time shifting features usually have more than one algorithm or formula for analyzing and processing different types of audio files. In fact, they're very similar from DAW to DAW using similar names, although there are variations that can be confusing. Pro Tools options for Elastic Audio are, again, pretty straightforward, so I'll start there. Time shifting is normally non-destructive, which means it doesn't permanently alter the audio wave in the audio file itself. It just shifts the timing on the fly. This makes for powerful and flexible editing capabilities, but also puts a little more strain on the CPU, at least for larger sessions. Most implementations of time shifting process the audio on a track-by-track -track basis. It's enabled for an entire track, and all regions on that track will be subject to the effect. But it can be applied as a permanent edit, changing or creating a new processed audio file. In that case, it could be applied to independent regions, but you lose the ability to tweak and fine-tune the timing on the fly as you work on the session. Pro Tools does let you apply one of the simpler Elastic Audio algorithms on a clip-by-clip -clip basis. And Logic lets you turn off its flex processing on a region-by-region -region basis, so there is some leeway there but most of the time you're working at the track level. Now, if I want the best sound quality when I time shift this song, I'll need to enable Elastic Audio for each track and choose the best algorithm for each instrument or voice. In fact, that's how you enable Elastic Audio, by choosing the algorithm. In the header for each track, there's a pop-up menu of the available choices. The options are rhythmic, monophonic, 
polyphonic, and very speed. These same options, more or less, are found in pretty much every DAW's time shifting implementation. The XForm option here is for non real time processing, rendering a new processed audio file, like I mentioned earlier. Even though the real power and flexibility of time shifting features like Elastic Audio comes from real time processing, the rendering option is for situations where maybe a good enough sound quality effect can't be achieved in real time, and by letting the software have more time to crunch the numbers, a better sounding result can sometimes be had. I'm just going to focus on the real time applications here. Now, the first thing any time shifting algorithm does when you enable it on a track in any DAW is to analyze the audio wave, finding each individual note and slicing up the wave internally into many small sections, one note or syllable per section. The wave and its region are left intact, but the data that identifies each new note is embedded into the original audio file. This lets the audio file be played back note by note as if it were a bunch of separate regions. This is how the tempo can be increased or decreased without the pitch changing. For example, to slow down a drum part, Elastic Audio would play back the drum notes with a little more space in between them. The audio that makes up each note can be unchanged, preserving the original pitch and natural tone, but the performance is slowed down. To increase tempo, each note is shortened slightly and they're played more quickly. It's something you could do by yourself, by hand, if you had infinite time and patience, but being able to do it at the push of a button is what makes it practical. Next up, I'll continue with Elastic Audio by applying processing to the various tracks in this test song, and I'll cover the various algorithms and applications.